Hey everyone. Um, I'm so glad that you are back with me to continue reading The Tale of Despero. If we could go back really fast and review what's already happened in the story, that's always really important when we're reading a chapter book. Otherwise, we might not remember all of those important details. Some of the things we already know about Despero, he's a small mouse, he's very sickly. He was born with his eyes wide open, which is really odd for a mouse. And he also has extremely large ears. We know that he doesn't always act like a regular mouse. He isn't afraid of all of the other things um, in the castle. He doesn't like to scurry. He also doesn't like to eat a lot of the things that other mice like to eat. Instead of eating the books, he would read the words that were on those pages. He then started to fall in love with the Princess P. Um, and we'll have to see her come through more and more, but as he was listening to the music from P and the king, his brother saw him and reported him to the mouse council, and now they are sending him down into the dungeon. Now, if you remember, Despero is a mouse, but these mice are so worried about the dungeon because in the dungeon are rats. We don't know a lot about rats yet in this story, but for some reason, I feel like it's not a good thing. We also learned a really important word called perfidy. Perfidy means something like untrustworthy or something that's lying to. There's a lot of that in our story. So we're gonna go ahead and start up with chapter 13 and our chapter is called Perfidy Unlimited. Together, the three mice traveled down, down, down. The thread around Espero's neck was tight. He felt as if it was choking him. He tugged at it with one paw. Don't touch the thread, barked the second hood. Yeah, echoed the first hood. Don't touch the thread. He moved quickly, and whenever Despero slowed, one of the two hoods poked at him in the shoulder and told him to keep moving. They went through holes in the wall and down golden stairs. They went past rooms with doors that were closed and doors that were flung wide. The three mice traveled across marble floors and under heavy velvet drapes. They moved through warm patches of sunlight and dark pools of shade. This, thought Despero, was the world he was leaving behind, a world that he knew and loved. And somewhere in it, the Princess P was laughing and smiling and clapping her hands to music, unaware of Despero's fate. That he would not be able to let the princess know what had become of him seemed suddenly unbearable to the mouse. Would, would it be possible for me to have a last word with the princess? Despero asked. A word? Said the second hood. You want a word with, with a human? I want, her, I want to tell her what has happened to me. Jeez, said the first hood. He stopped and stamped a paw on the floor in frustration. Grapes, you can't learn anything, can you? The voice was terribly familiar to Despero. Burlo? He said. What? Said the first hood irritably. Despero shuddered. His own brother was delivering him to the dungeon. His heart stopped beating and shrunk to a small, cold, disbelieving pebble. But then, just as quickly, it leapt alive again, beating with hope. Burlo! Despero said, and he looked. He took one of his brother's paw on his own. Please, please let me go. Please, I'm your brother. Burlo rolled his eyes. He took his paw out of Despero's. No, he said. No way. Please, said Despero. No, said Burlo. Rules are rules. Reader, do you recall the word perfidy? As our story progresses, perfidy becomes an even more appropriate word, doesn't it? Perfidy was certainly the word that was in Despero's mind as the mice finally approached the narrow, steep, stairs that led to the black hole of the dungeon. They stood, the three mice, two with hoods and one without, and contemplated the abyss before them. That means think about the empty space before them. And then Furlow stood up on his hind legs and placed his right paw over his heart. For the good of the castle mice, he announced to the darkness, we deliver this day to the dungeon a mouse in need of punishment. He is, according to the laws we have established, wearing the red thread.
of death. I am glad of death, repeated Despero in a small voice. Wearing the red thread of death was a terrible phrase, but the mouse didn't have long to consider its implications because he was suddenly pushed from behind by the hooded mice. The push was a strong one, and it sent Despero flying down the stairs into the dungeon. As he tumbled, whisker over tail, through the darkness, there were only two words in his mind. One was perfidy, and the other word that he clung to was P. Perfidy, P. Perfidy, P. These were the words that pinwheeled through Despero's mind as his body descended into the darkness. Here we have the two mice taking Despero down. We're going to move to chapter 14 called Darkness. Despero lay on his back at the bottom of the steps and touched the bones in his body one by one. They were all there. And amazingly, they, they were unbroken. He got to his feet and became aware of a terrible, foul, extremely insulting smell. The dungeon reader stank. It stank of despair and suffering and hopelessness, which is to say that the dungeon smelled of rats. And it was dark, so dark. Despero had never before encountered darkness so awful, so all-encompassing. The darkness had a physical presence as if it were being all its own. The mouse held one small paw up in front of his whiskers. He could not see it. And he had the truly alarming thought that perhaps he, Despero Tilling, did not even exist. Oh my, he said out loud. His voice echoed in the smelly darkness. Perfidy, said Despero, just to hear his voice again, just to ensure himself that he did exist. He, said Despero, and the name of his beloved was immediately swallowed up by the darkness. He shivered, he shook, he sneezed, his teeth chattered, he longed for his handkerchief. He grabbed hold of his tail. It took him a long, frightening moment to even locate his tail, so absolute was the darkness, to have something, anything to hold on to. He considered fainting. He deemed it the only responsible response to the situation in which he found himself. But then he remembered the words of the threadmaster, honor, courtesy, devotion, and bravery. I will be brave, thought Despero. I will try to be brave like a knight in shining armor. I will be brave for the Princess P. How best for him to be brave? He cleared his throat. <clears throat> he let go of his tail. He stood up straighter. Once upon a time, he said out loud to the darkness. He said these words because they were the best, the most powerful words that he knew, and just the saying of them comforted him. Once upon a time, he said again, feeling a tiny bit braver. There was a knight and he wore always an armor of shining silver. Once upon a time, boomed a voice from the darkness. A knight of shining armor? What does a mouse know of such things? That voice, the loudest voice that Despero had ever heard, could only, he assumed, belong to the world's largest rat. Despero's small, overworked heart stopped beating. And for the second time that day, the mouse fainted. We are going to go ahead and stop there for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the tale of Despero and you will join me again tomorrow. Bye.